The tech conference after party was in full swing, the air thick with the scent of expensive champagne and idle chatter. As I made my way through the crowd, glass of rosé in hand, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. My eyes scanned the room, searching for my husband, Rowan, who had drifted away moments earlier. That's when I saw them. Rowan, in a dimly lit corner, laughing intimately with a woman I didn't recognize. My heart stopped, and a tightness gripped my chest. I knew Rowan, and this... this wasn't normal. Stealing myself, I drew closer, straining to hear their hushed conversation. June, I can't wait for us to start our new life together. That house we looked at is perfect. Just wait until Lila finds out. Rowan's words sent a shockwave through me. A new house? With this woman? My mind raced as I tried to make sense of what I was hearing. Don't worry, darling. Once the money from your little embezzlement scheme clears, we'll be set. Lila will be none the wiser, June purred, her hand trailing along Rowan's arm. Embezzlement? My head spun as the pieces fell into place. Rowan, my loving husband, the father of my children, had been betraying me all this time. Rage and betrayal surged through me, threatening to consume me. I cleared my throat, causing them to jump in surprise. Rowan, June, what a pleasant surprise. Rowan's face drained of color as he stumbled to find the right words. Lila, I... this isn't what it looks like. Isn't it? I fired back my voice dripping with venom. Because it looks like you're planning to run off with this woman, using money you stole from my company. June's eyes narrowed, a sly smile playing on her lips. Oh, Rowan, you didn't tell your dear wife about our little arrangement? Rowan shot June a pleading look, but she seemed to relish in his discomfort. Lila, please, let me explain. Explain what, Rowan? I cut him off, my hands trembling with a mix of rage and heartbreak. How you've been betraying me, our family, and everything I've built. No, I don't want to hear it. I turned on my heel, determined to put as much distance between myself and this train wreck as possible. But Rowan's hand shot out, grasping my arm. Lila, wait. Please, let's talk about this. I can fix this, I promise. I yanked my arm free, glaring at him with a fury I hadn't known I possessed. Fix it? How, Rowan? By running off with your mistress and my money? I scoffed, the words burning my tongue. No, I'm done, we're done. I want a divorce. With that, I stormed away, leaving Rowan and June in my wake, their shocked expressions searing into my memory. As I made my way out of the conference center, my vision blurred with tears of betrayal and rage. How could he do this to me, to our family? The drive home was a blur of my mind racing with a thousand questions and a thousand more answers I didn't want to confront. By the time I pulled into the driveway, I had made up my mind. I was going to fight. I was going to take back everything Rowan had stolen from me, starting with my company and my life. The drive home from the tech conference felt like an eternity. My mind was a whirlwind of emotions. Anger, betrayal, a desperate need for answers. How could Rowan do this to me? To our family. The image of him with that woman, June, plotting to run off with my money, burned in my mind, searing into my very soul. As I pulled into the driveway, I sat in the car for a long moment, hands gripping the steering wheel until my knuckles turned white. I had to get a handle on this, to channel my fury into action. Lila Blackwood didn't back down, not from anyone, especially not her own husband. With a deep breath, I marched into the house, my footsteps echoing with determination. I found Rowan in the living room, pacing anxiously, his face a picture of guilt and panic. Lila, thank God you're back. We need to talk about what you heard. I held up a hand, cutting him off. Save it, Rowan. I don't want to hear your pathetic excuses. My voice was calm, but my eyes burned with barely contained rage. I want the truth. Everything. Rowan's shoulders slumped, and he sank into the couch, running a hand through his hair. It, it started a few months ago. I got in over my head with some gambling debts, and I needed money fast. So I started skimming from your company accounts. Just a little at first, but then it spiraled out of control. I clenched my fists, nails digging into my palms. And June, how does she fit into all this? June, she was someone I met at the casino. She saw an opportunity to get in on the money, and we started planning to run off together. I'm sorry, Lila. I never meant for any of this to happen. Sorry? I scoffed, the word dripping with contempt. You're sorry? Rowan, you've betrayed me, our family, and everything I've built. Do you have any idea what this could do to my company? Rowan's eyes widened in panic. 
Lila, please, you can't tell anyone. I'll pay it all back, I swear. Just give me some time. I shook my head, my resolve hardening. No, Rowan. You've had your chance and you blew it. I'm filing for divorce, and I'm going to make sure you pay for what you've done. Divorce? Lila, you can't be serious. Rowan surged to his feet, desperation etched in every line of his face. Think of the kids. Think of everything we've built together. I am thinking of the kids, Rowan, I replied, my voice cutting like ice. I'm thinking of the life you've stolen from them, the stability you've destroyed. And as for everything we've built, well, you've made it very clear that it means nothing to you. I turned to leave, pausing only to glare at him over my shoulder. This is your mess, Rowan. Clean it up. Because if you don't, I will. And you won't like the consequences. With that, I strode out of the room, my mind already racing with a thousand plans to untangle the web of deceit Rowan had woven. I would not go down without a fight. I would reclaim what was mine, no matter the cost. The moment I stepped into my office, a sense of purpose and determination washed over me. Rowan's betrayal had shattered my world, but I refused to let him win. This was my life, my company, and I would be damned if I let him destroy everything I'd built. I quickly called a meeting with the executive team, Marco, my trusted CFO, and Clara, my longtime mentor and closest confidante. As they gathered around the conference table, I could see the concern etched on their faces. Lila, what's going on? Marco asked, his brow furrowed. I heard the rumors about you and Rowan, but I wanted to hear it from you. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the difficult conversation ahead. Rowan has been embezzling money from the company. He's been using it to fund a gambling addiction and to set up a new life with his mistress. Clara's eyes widened in shock, while Marco's face darkened with fury. That bastard, he growled. How much has he taken? I'm not sure yet, I admitted, but I need you both to help me get to the bottom of this. I want a full forensic audit of the company financials, and I want it done yesterday. Consider it done. Marco said, already pulling out his phone to assemble the team. And that's not all. I turned to Clara, my gaze unwavering. I need your help navigating the legal minefield. I'm filing for divorce, and I want to make sure Rowan pays for what he's done. Clara reached across the table, giving my hand a reassuring squeeze. Of course, Lila. I'll put my best people on it. We'll make sure he doesn't get away with this. As the meeting adjourned, I felt a newfound sense of purpose. Rowan may have betrayed me, but I wasn't going down without a fight. I was going to take back control of my life, my company, and my future. Over the next few days, I worked tirelessly with Marco and his team, digging deeper into the company's finances. The numbers were staggering. Rowan had siphoned off millions, all while living a lavish lifestyle with his mistress. The rage I felt only fueled my determination. Concurrently, Clara's legal team sprung into action— freezing Rowan's assets and preparing for a messy divorce battle. They uncovered even more of Rowan's deceit, including debts he had racked up in my name. It was infuriating, but I was grateful to have such a capable team fighting in my corner. As the legal proceedings began, Rowan grew increasingly desperate, lashing out with threats and attempts at manipulation, but I refused to back down. I had spent years building my company, my reputation, and my life. I wasn't about to let Rowan destroy it all. You'll regret this, Lila, he snarled during one particularly heated exchange. I'll make sure you and the kids lose everything. I met his gaze, unflinching. I don't think so, Rowan. You're the one who's going to lose everything. Your money, your freedom, your family. This is my life, and I'm taking it back. With that, I turned and walked away, my steps filled with a newfound confidence. I had the support of my allies, the weight of the evidence on my side, and a burning desire for justice. Rowan may have thought he could outsmart me, but he was about to learn a hard lesson. You don't mess with Lila Blackwood. As the legal battle with Rowan raged on, I was grateful to have a strong support system in my corner. Marco, my loyal CFO and friend, had been instrumental in unraveling the financial web Rowan had woven. He worked tirelessly, poring over every transaction, every account, to piece together the full extent of the embezzlement. And then there was Clara, my trusted mentor and confidant. Her legal team was a force to be reckoned with, navigating the treacherous waters of the divorce proceedings with a skill that left Rowan's lawyers floundering. They uncovered even more of Rowan's deception, 
from hidden assets to fraudulent loans taken out in my name. This is a mess, Lila, Clara said during one of our strategy sessions. But we're going to make sure Rowan pays for what he's done. I promise you that. I nodded, feeling a surge of gratitude and determination. I know, Clara. I couldn't do this without you and Marco. You two have been my rocks through all of this. Clara reached across the table, giving my hand a gentle squeeze. That's what family is for. We're in this together, Lila. All the way. I smiled, feeling a weight lift from my shoulders. With Clara and Marco by my side, I knew I could face anything Rowan threw at me. But Rowan, it seemed, was not one to go down without a fight. As the proceedings dragged on, his desperation became more and more apparent. He resorted to threats, trying to intimidate me into backing down. You think you can just take everything from me? He snarled during one particularly heated exchange. I won't let you, Lila. I'll make sure you and the kids suffer for this. I held my ground, refusing to be cowed by his empty threats. The only one who's going to suffer is you, Rowan. You brought this on yourself. Now you're going to face the consequences. Rowan's face contorted with rage, and for a moment I saw a glimpse of the man I thought I knew the man I had loved and trusted. But that man was long gone, replaced by a desperate, greedy individual who had betrayed everything we'd built together. As the legal proceedings continued, Rowan's behavior only grew more erratic. He lashed out at my allies, threatening Marco and even going so far as to confront Clara in her own office. "'You're all a bunch of vultures circling around to pick at the scraps of my life,' he shouted, his face twisted with fury. I won't let you take everything from me. Clara, ever the picture of composure, simply regarded him with a cool, steady gaze. The only person taking anything from you, Rowan, is you. You've done this to yourself, and now you're going to pay the price. Rowan's shoulders slumped, the fight seeming to drain from him. But I knew better than to let my guard down. This was a man who had shown himself capable of the most despicable betrayals, and I couldn't afford to underestimate him. As I left Clara's office, I couldn't help but feel a sense of foreboding. Rowan was a wounded animal, and wounded animals were the most dangerous. I knew that the final showdown was still to come, and I had to be ready for anything. As the legal battle with Rowan dragged on, I knew I had to take matters into my own hands. The constant threats, the whispers of his crimes, and the strain it was putting on my company and my family, it was becoming too much to bear. That's when I decided to go on the offensive. With the help of my trusted friend and PR maven, Samantha, I crafted a carefully orchestrated plan to expose Rowan's misdeeds to the world. It's time to shift the narrative, Lila, Samantha said, her eyes gleaming with determination. Let's take control of the story before Rowan can spin it to his advantage. I nodded, my resolve hardening. I'm ready. Whatever it takes to bring him down and protect my company and my family. Over the next few weeks, Samantha worked tirelessly, using her extensive network of media contacts to plant the seeds of Rowan's downfall. She fed juicy tidbits to the tech press, hinting at the scandal brewing behind the scenes, the embezzlement, the gambling, the mistress. It didn't take long for the story to pick up steam. Soon, headlines were blaring, and the public was clamoring for more details. Rowan, who had once been a respected figure in the industry, found himself thrust into the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. When the sharks began to circle, Rowan grew increasingly desperate, lashing out at me and my allies, but we were ready for him. You think this is going to save you, Lila? He spat, his eyes wild with fury. You've only made things worse. Now the whole world knows what a conniving bitch you are. I met his gaze, unflinching. No, Rowan, the whole world knows what a despicable, greedy man you are, and they're going to watch as you pay for your sins. Rowan let out a humorless laugh. You really think you can win this? You have no idea what I'm capable of. Oh, but I do, I replied, my voice dripping with contempt, and that's why I'm going to make sure you never hurt me or my family ever again. With that, I turned and walked away, leaving Rowan seething in his own impotent rage. I knew that the worst was yet to come, but I was prepared. I had the support of my allies, the weight of the evidence on my side, and a burning desire for justice. As the media storm raged on, I continued to work tirelessly with Samantha and my legal team to ensure that Rowan's misdeeds were exposed for all to see. We leveraged every connection, every resource at our disposal, 
until the truth became impossible to ignore. Rowan's gambling addiction, his lavish lifestyle funded by my company's money, his betrayal of our family, it all came pouring out, a torrent of revelations that left him reeling. I watched with a grim satisfaction as his social and professional standing crumbled, his once vaunted reputation reduced to ashes. And through it all I remained steadfast, my focus laser-sharp on the ultimate goal, reclaiming my life, my company, and my future. Rowan had taken so much from me, but I was determined to take it all back, and then some. As the final showdown in the courtroom loomed, I knew that the stakes had never been higher, but this time I was the one in control. This time, Rowan would answer for his crimes, and I would emerge victorious. The day of the final courtroom showdown had arrived, and I couldn't help but feel a surge of nervous anticipation coursing through my veins. After months of legal battles, of exposing Rowan's deceit and betrayal, this was the moment of reckoning. As I stepped into the imposing courtroom, my eyes immediately landed on Rowan, sitting hunched at the defendant's table his once confident demeanor now tinged with desperation. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the challenge ahead, and joined my own legal team, led by the formidable Vivian. "'Are you ready for this, Lila?' Vivian asked, her gaze unwavering. I nodded, my jaw set with determination. "'More than ready. Let's make him pay for what he's done.' The proceedings began with Vivian laying out the evidence, the meticulous paper trail of Rowan's embezzlement, the damning financial records, the testimony of those he'd wronged. With each passing moment, Rowan's face grew paler, the noose tightening around his neck. But just when I thought the case was all but won, Rowan's lawyer pulled a surprise witness, June, the woman he'd been planning to run off with. As June took the stand, her eyes darted around the courtroom, a mixture of fear and defiance etched on her face. I—I I didn't know the full extent of Rowan's crimes, she stammered. I only found out about the embezzlement and his gambling addiction after he dragged me into his scheme. Rowan's lawyer pounced, sensing an opportunity. So you're telling us that my client kept you in the dark about his illegal activities? June hesitated, her gaze flickering to where I sat. Yes, that's right, Rowan. He lied to me, just like he lied to his wife. I had no idea what he was doing until it was too late. The courtroom erupted in a flurry of murmurs and I felt a surge of triumph. Rowan's carefully crafted web of lies was unraveling before our eyes. Vivian wasted no time in seizing the advantage. So, Miss June, are you telling this court that you were an unwitting accomplice in Mr. Blackwood's criminal activities? June nodded, her voice trembling. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm, I'm sorry for what I've done. I never meant for any of this to happen. Rowan's face contorted with fury, and he leaped to his feet, his chair clattering to the floor. "'You backstabbing bitch!' he bellowed, his eyes wild with rage. "'How dare you turn against me!' The judge slammed his gavel, his voice booming through the stunned silence. "'Order in the court. Mr. Blackwood, you will control yourself or be held in contempt.' Rowan sank back into his seat, his shoulders slumped in defeat. I couldn't help but feel a sense of grim satisfaction wash over me. This was it, the moment I'd been waiting for, the moment Rowan would finally face the consequences of his actions. As the final arguments were presented, I watched Rowan's world crumble around him. The evidence was overwhelming, the testimonies damning. There was no escape, no way for him to wriggle out of this. And when the verdict was read, sentencing Rowan to a lengthy prison term and stripping him of his assets, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. Justice had been served— and I had emerged victorious. Rowan's betrayal had been laid bare for all to see, and now he would pay the price. As I left the courtroom, I couldn't help but feel a sense of bittersweet triumph. I had won, but at what cost? The pain of Rowan's betrayal still stung, and the scars would take time to heal. But I knew that I was stronger for it, and that I was ready to start anew to reclaim my life and my future. The verdict had come down, and Rowan's world crumbled around him. As he was led away in handcuffs, his face contorted with a mix of disbelief and rage, I couldn't help but feel a sense of grim satisfaction. "'This isn't over, Lila,' he shouted, his voice laced with desperation. "'I'll make you pay for this, I swear!' I simply regarded him with a cool, steady gaze. "'No, Rowan. This is over. You've lost everything—your freedom, your money, your family. And now you're going to pay the price for your betrayal.' 
With that, he was whisked away, the heavy courtroom doors slamming shut behind him. I let out a deep breath, feeling as if a weight had been lifted from my shoulders. The nightmare was finally over. In the days and weeks that followed, the full extent of Rowan's downfall became painfully clear. His assets were seized, his reputation in tatters, and his once vaunted status in the tech community reduced to ashes. The media, once obsessed with his rise to power, now gleefully reported on his spectacular fall from grace. As for me, I emerged from the ordeal stronger and more determined than ever. With the help of my loyal allies, I set about the task of rebuilding my life and my company. Marco, my trusted CFO, worked tirelessly to restore the financial stability that Rowan had threatened to destroy, while Clara's legal team ensured that I retained full custody of our children and a significant portion of our joint assets. You've come out of this a warrior, Lila, Clara said, a proud smile tugging at the corners of her mouth. Rowan thought he could break you, but you've proven him wrong. Now it's time to reclaim your life. I nodded, feeling a surge of determination. That's exactly what I intend to do. I won't let Rowan's betrayal define me. This is my chance to start fresh, to build something even better. And that's exactly what I did. With a renewed sense of purpose, I poured my energy into my company, steering it to new heights of success. I used my experiences to create a foundation dedicated to supporting and empowering other women entrepreneurs, ensuring that they never had to face the kind of betrayal and adversity that I had endured. As for Rowan, his downfall was swift and unforgiving. Stripped of his wealth and social standing, he found himself adrift, a pariah in the very community he had once dominated. Attempts to rebuild his life were met with scorn and rejection, a constant reminder of the consequences of his actions. I couldn't help but feel a twinge of pity for him, but it was quickly overshadowed by the anger and resentment that still simmered within me. Rowan had taken so much from me, and even now, as he languished in the ruins of his once gilded life, I couldn't find it in myself to forgive him. You brought this on yourself, Rowan, I said, when he reached out to me one final time, his voice laced with desperation. And now you have to live with the consequences. With that, I severed all ties, determined to move forward and never look back. Rowan's betrayal had changed me, but it hadn't broken me. If anything, it had forged me into a stronger, more resilient woman, one who was ready to take on the world and win. As the dust settled on the tumultuous events that had upended my life, I found myself standing at the precipice of a new chapter. Rowan's betrayal had shaken me to my core, but it had also forged me into a stronger, more resilient woman. I was determined to take back control of my life and my future, and that's exactly what I set out to do. With Rowan's assets and embezzled funds returned to me, I was able to not only stabilize my company but propel it to new heights of success. The public sympathy was firmly on my side, and I leveraged that goodwill to secure lucrative contracts and investments. My team, led by the ever-reliable Marco, worked tirelessly to streamline operations and capitalize on the newfound momentum. It's like a weight has been lifted off our shoulders, Lila, Marco said during one of our strategy meetings. Now that Rowan's mess is behind us, we can focus on taking this company to the next level. I nodded, a small smile tugging at the corners of my lips. That's exactly what I intend to do, Marco. This is our chance to build something truly remarkable. And that's exactly what we did. Over the following months, I poured my energy into not only rebuilding my company, but also creating a foundation to support other women entrepreneurs. The Lila Blackwood Foundation, as it came to be known, was a passion project that allowed me to channel my experiences into empowering others who faced similar challenges. You're an inspiration, Lila, Clara, my trusted mentor, told me during the foundation's launch event. The way you've risen from the ashes of Rowan's betrayal is a testament to your strength and resilience. I felt a swell of pride, but also a twinge of bittersweet emotion. It wasn't easy, Clara. Rowan's actions nearly destroyed me, but I refused to let him win. This foundation is my way of ensuring that no other woman has to go through what I did. Clara squeezed my hand, her eyes shining with pride. And that's exactly why it's going to be a success. You've turned your pain into purpose, Lila. That's the mark of a true leader. As the foundation gained momentum, I found myself drawing strength from the women whose lives I was able to touch. 
their stories of triumph over adversity, their determination to forge their own paths, it all served as a powerful reminder of why I had embarked on this journey in the first place. And then one day, as I was reviewing the Foundation's latest initiatives, I received an unexpected call. It was Rowan, his voice tinged with desperation. Lila, please, you have to help me. I've lost everything, my money, my freedom, my reputation. I'm a pariah, and I have nothing left. I paused, my finger hovering over the end call button. A part of me wanted to simply hang up, to let Rowan wallow in the consequences of his own actions. But another part, a small, stubborn part, urged me to at least hear him out. What do you want, Rowan? I asked, my voice measured and calm. There was a long pause on the other end of the line, and I could almost feel the weight of his shame. I... I want to start over, Lila. I want to make amends, to try and rebuild my life. But I can't do it alone. Please, help me. I took a deep breath, my mind racing with a thousand thoughts. After everything Rowan had put me through, could I really find it in myself to offer him a second chance? Could I, the woman he had betrayed so deeply, be the one to extend a lifeline? In the end, the decision wasn't as difficult as I had anticipated. Rowan, I can't forgive you for what you've done. The damage you've caused is too great, and the trust you've broken can't be mended. I paused, stealing myself for what I was about to say next. But if you're truly serious about starting over, about making amends, then I'll help you. On one condition. You have to be willing to work for it. Nothing will be handed to you this time. There was a moment of stunned silence, and then a faint, fragile voice came through the receiver. Thank you, Lila. I, I won't let you down. I promise. As I hung up the phone, I felt a strange mix of emotions, a lingering resentment, a sliver of hope, and a profound sense of purpose. Rowan's road to redemption would be a long and arduous one, but if anyone could walk that path, it was him. And if he succeeded, perhaps there was a chance for true healing, for both of us. With a renewed sense of determination, I turned my attention back to the Foundation, ready to forge ahead and continue making a difference in the lives of women everywhere. This was my new beginning, and I was determined to make the most of it.